this is like a beef farmer's dream. We punch above our weight, but these guys are top dog. I mean, this looks like a Wagamama's. And I'm starting to realize we're not the best. What is up people and welcome back to another video. You are probably wondering where the hell I am right now because this is not the farm. It is currently 6.30 a.m. It is really noisy. I am at Birmingham Airport heading out to Cologne, Germany to the world's biggest food and beverage trade fair. The reason for this trip is because the AHDB are going to be there representing British red meat and I'm going out to see and document what your levy as farmers pays for. So for those of you who aren't farmers and don't know, every single product that we sell off our farm is subject to a levy. So when we said sell meat, we have a cut taken out of that meat. When we sell grain, there's a cut taken out of that grain. When we sell milk, there's a cut taken out of every liter of uh, milk that is sold off a farm. And that goes to paying the HDB and it goes to research. It goes to developing export markets. It goes to knowledge exchange, so many different things. Now there's a bit of contention around it at the minute because the HDB are increasing their levy, which some farmers are for, some farmers are against. I'm hoping that when we go there today, we're gonna have a bit of an idea what really our levy gets spent on and how valuable it really is for us. First problem though, is I've gotta try and work an airport which is uh, not really my kind of thing. Whoa, and we made it. I'm not even gonna talk about the journey because we think that the Germans have got everything sorted out. And I tell you, that's a myth. It is not as streamlined here as what you were gonna expect it to be. But eventually I managed to get to my hotel. Now I went out last night with some of the guys from the AHDB who do a lot of this export work, who, who are in charge of doing the stand, organizing the people that are on the stand, sorting out all the imports of the meat for this show in particular. But before we go, I thought it was probably important to stick some facts and figures in here because I don't know how noisy it's gonna be there, I don't know how easy it's gonna be to stick them in, so I thought whilst it's nice and quiet in my hotel room, before I go for breakfast, I'm gonna tell you some facts and figures about the HDB and their exports. So every year the HDB spend eight million pounds of levy money to facilitate and build Britain's reputation across the world for producing high quality, amazing food products. For every one pound, that they spend on exports, we recoup 11 pounds and 90 in trade, which is a seriously good investment. One of the main reasons for keeping our face at shows like this is because the world meat consumption is expected to rise by, I've got it here, 1.8% this year. Some of the developing world is just rapidly increasing their meat consumption. As people become more wealthy, they eat a lot more meat. So the market opportunities in these places are insane. In 2022, exports of British red meat and dairy products from the UK topped 3.6 billion pounds. And here's a fun fact for you. The export markets are so important to the UK that for every head of beef that is sold, around 160 something pounds of value is added to that carcass. And for every head of lamb, it's 35 pounds. Anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna head down for breakfast and then we're gonna go hit a new year. Right, so we've made it into Anuga. We're now in the meat hall. This place is enormous. I can't even begin to explain. Oh, dairy cows. It is enormous. We've got some sheep over there. We've got, oh, look over here. We've got some beef carcasses. We've not got to the HDB stand yet. Look at this. I mean, this is like a beef farmer's dream. Oh, here we go. This is it. This is the HDB stand, Great Britain. Northern Ireland, it's like the HD beer in the middle. And then around the outside, they've sold little bits to different people who work in the meat industry within the UK, both in red meat and in pork. Foils are here somewhere, Pilgrims is over there, Northwest. So all these people are here trying to do trade deals uh, with other countries. If you're here for pork, China's a massive market for pork. Into Ireland, if it's beef. We've got some carcasses here hung up. We've got a bar at the front. We can have some beers, some coffees. There's a kitchen at the back. So there's constantly gonna be food coming out. There's a menu on here. So if we look on the menu, beef fillet steak with peeled vegetables, frankfurt herbs and mustard seeds, roasted rack of lamb with dried fruits, bulgar, shiitake mushrooms and coriander, pulled pork, 
served with a brioche bun, coleslaw and barbecue sauce. I saw some pictures of these yesterday and they look incredible. There's a lot of people here, so what'll happen is we're getting people from different countries will come onto the stand. They'll cook our meat in the kitchen, bring it out onto the tables, and then people can taste it, see what it's like. They can say, you know what, I like a bit of that. And all of this is helping bolster the British meat market. Jono's here. Jono is in charge of like exports he's got a very busy very very busy man this lady is in charge no. she's in charge of organizing everything we would be in a right mess if it wasn't for her leah's here leah saved me from the airport everyone else is here as well we've got joe becca sam sarah and then james at the back as well so we're being herded right now joe is doing his whole youtube thing we're on the american stand so phil hadley who is the top dog in exports is just taking us to show some of the competition at the end of the day we do a great job in our country but we have to compete on a global scale and this is the america stand on our left and it is about six times the size of our stand now the hdb stand is the biggest stand they've ever had at this show and this is six times bigger so it just goes to show you they've got two stories they've got a upper meeting room it's also a little bit linked in with their poultry sector but there'll be carcasses hanging here i mean obviously american are doing it properly big usa side you know how proud they are america's levy board phil tells us is very similar to the hdb so it's a really good thing for us to look at as a competition I love the big USA sign. That is so American, it's unbelievable. Trades of US meat is absolutely massive. They are on a way bigger scale than what we are on. We punch above our weight, but these guys are top dog. So we've just been to the USA stand and had a chat with Dan and Monty there who are part of their export team. Really interesting listening about their markets. Now they're amazing exports, but they're not really a competition to us because their cost of production is so high that when they bring their meat exported to the UK, it would be way more expensive than what we produce. So therefore, it's not an issue. But we now come to Argentinian uh, beef stand. This is their hospitality area. And then they've got all these other stands over here as well. They're on a very extensive system, very grass focused, very sort of Angus, Hereford, native cattle, very much trying to promote the same sort of things that we try to promote in our cattle systems. Uh, we were going to meet with their president, but he's not very well. So we're going to chat to someone else who's within their system now. We can't film these, but it is interesting. I'll relay the information that we're going to get from them. So we've just been chatting with some of the guys from Argentina in a private little office. Very interesting that their whole levy board system is very similar to ours. So 70% of the cost that goes to them as part of uh, to fund their levy board is funded by the producer. 30% is funded by the processor, which is pretty much ident identical to what we do. They had a really good market actually into Europe. They still have a good European market, but it's dropped back a little bit since Brexit because they used to send some stuff into the UK, which they now struggle to do. So that has helped our beef price. One thing that was really interesting is their domestic consumption. So 70% of what they produce is consumed domestically and 30% is exported. They export just a tiny little bit more than we do. But their domestic consumption of beef is 48 kilograms per person. They consume about 120 kilos of meat per person. 48 is beef, 48 is chicken and poultry, and then the rest is made up with a little bit of fish, a little bit of pork, that kind of thing. In comparison to us, we eat around 17 kilos of beef, which is pretty poor, but we're still on like Argentina stand. Their stand, this is how important their exports are to them, their stand cost them over a million dollars, which is an enormous amount of money. We're back at HDB now, you can see it's proper hotting up because it's getting towards dinner time. This place smells amazing because everyone is cooking. We're just about to have a bit more of an in-depth tour from people on our stand. And we're also going to get um, some ministers as well. At some point, we're going to get to interview them as well. So it's been really interesting. It's been proper full on. We're getting pulled from pillar to post. But it is amazing to see this. These stands are a fortune and it's really starting to be obvious how important the export markets are, not just to us, but to everybody. But it's also important to us to be here because we are competing with all of these people. These are competitors. It's opening my eyes to what really goes into British meat production, not just beef, but lamb, pork and everything else. One thing I will point out as well, which is really interesting to me as a beef producer, is that everyone's pictures of beef are all like that. They're all extremely marbled, like high eating quality beef. I have a real issue with the, uh, with the grading scheme. I'm not gonna get into it. 
these high quality cuts of meat are seeming to be the thing that people really want to promote. But it's not just about that, this market, because a huge amount of the stuff that gets sold here is like third, uh, fifth quarter products. Things like offal, skins, those kind of things, tong. They, they have huge markets. Our third biggest exporter in quantity, I think it's, is it Ghana? Or it's an, it's an African country, and it's not a huge amount of value product, but just an enormous quantity of, th of fifth quarter. I'm not sure whose stand this is, um, because it's not a language I understand, but look at that. This is incredible. I like their color scheme, but just look at that. Amazing, absolutely amazing. It's probably important to point out that the HDB um, aren't the only ones here from UK. So we've got like Dumbia back there, Quality Meat Scotland, you can hear the bagpipes in the background, they're over there somewhere behind these guys. The Welsh, their deal are over there somewhere. I've bought past them, I can't remember exactly where they are. It's too big to remember where anything is. ABP are here somewhere as well. So there is a lot of people trying to sell their products that are British products as well. So it's just, you know, it is mental. But it, like I've said before, just the competition is huge. But it is amazing like when you come to realize that our products as British beef and lamb seem very valuable to other people. But actually the cost of production elsewhere in the world means that when they're shipping their products over to us, it actually ends up too expensive. So importing products to us is, is not really a, a big deal at the minute. Oh, oh, here's a lamb, here's a Welsh lamb, Welsh beef. Here's a Welsh one. For you Welsh followers will like that one. You might also notice we've got like pilgrims are here, just here we've got pig stocks. We've got Joe Seals here. Hello. We've got the guys at Warrendale Wagyu as well. They've got a stand. So these people are all on part of the HDB stand trying to promote their products individually. There's quite a lot of sort of Irish producers because a huge amount of our export market goes to Ireland for, for packaging. So 80% of what we export in total goes to Ireland into Europe. In the pork side of things, there's a huge sort of integration. So there's a lot of integrated schemes um, and a lot of those go to China. So China's an enormous, enormous pork market for us. It's also really important to point out that there seems to be quite a big emphasis by a lot of these stands on extensively produced stuff. Here's um, Vion, I think is a Dutch company, but you'll see again above like heritage, food safety, taste, uh, regionality, like traceability and those kind of things just seem really important. Wood eggs are here. 3,000 cattle a week, 8,000 lambs and 16,000 pigs a week go through wood heads alone. My God, that's, uh, that's impressive. So we've just had lunch turning up. This has been cooked in the kitchen behind us by some amazing chefs. We've got some lamb here and we've got some beef. And there is a pork where no one's had the pork yet. Um, like a pork open sandwich. All of this is obviously, obviously from British. The beef is from Foils, the lamb. I did, I did just learn this, but I forgot. The pork is from, I think it's from Caro and the lamb's from someone else. Lamb's from Pilgrims. Lamb's from Pilgrims. Just here at the Australian stand, so this is the MLA, Meat and Livestock Australia. So it's a very similar thing to the HDB, but Australia, a massive stand. We've got New Zealand here, Uruguay beef and lamb. Wow. I mean, this looks like a Wagamama's. But again, very similar messaging. It's like all this outdoor, extensive reared. And they want to take what they consider the best products from around the world whether it's oil, bread, whatever it is. So they, by default, will come here because you've got every size of food producer that's capable of export. So they're not wasting their time with an artisan guy who just can't do that. So you've got everybody here, different scales. So they'll send people here who have, who have a list of stuff to get. So it might be like, find me the best virgin oil. So somebody will come here, they can't go home to their boss without sorting it. They'll probably go around 30 places the first day one, and they'll narrow it down to 10, then they'll start negotiating. You just think, that is so cool. They're not going to find you on the farm, are they? You have to be here. So there you are, straight from the horse's mouth, about how important this trade show is to these people who are on the HDB stand. So they're here with like Dingley Dale Pork, doing these amazing sort of charcuterie products. And they're just saying how important that this 
whole thing is to them and their business and finding markets elsewhere in the world. So we've just come for a wander down into the dairy section. Um, it's just like cheese heaven here. There is cheese everywhere. We're supposed to be heading to the British dairy stand because they are represented here somewhere as well. And here we are. This is a great British Northern Ireland. And then over here we've got Republic of Ireland. Uh, the dairy section, so there's cheeses. We've got some bits over there we can go and eat, which sounds great. We've got Cathedral City here. We've got Wensleydale, Long Clawson Dairy, which is near us. That's down in Melton Mowbray. We've even got Eat Lean here doing pizzas. They've got a pizza oven, firing pizzas out so you can have a bit of slice of pizza. I managed to find some ice cream balls, which is making us very happy right now because it is hot in here. This is a weird, like this sandwich is bakery. Um, this guy's got like chips, frozen food. Pizza. It's Joe in his element. We're having a bit of a Pepsi challenge with some Wagyu. It's kindly been given to us, which is going to be amazing. Um, we're just I cooking need it up. A hairnet to go in there, so I think you're, you're I'm all right because I've got no hair, so I can do whatever <laughs> I like. I can wander wherever. But like, here's the rack of lamb look as well that they were doing earlier. Absolutely amazing. I like, just the Michelin star chefs. Oh, they're making the most of this. It's incredible quality meat. My God. So after we ate that Wagyu, which I'm not gonna lie, was probably one of the best things I've ever eaten. And we actually had some of that Dingley Dale pork as well, um, which is extremely marbled. I won't get into it too much, but also amazing. Not like your usual pork chop. We got whisked off to the British meat dinner, which was in some other part of Cologne. We had to get on a bus. The place was chaos. Was amazing time at the dinner, really interesting. And then we came back here late last night. I wasn't drunk because I don't really drink. I had a couple hours sleep and now I'm packing, I've got to get to the airport. So I thought I'd just finish this off pretty quickly. One thing I've realized coming here, I wish every farmer could come here and see the amount of effort that goes into exporting our meat and how important it is to us as farmers and the amount of money that we actually make from it. Sometimes you'd hear like, we import this and we import that meat and or whatever, and I could never quite get my head around it. And now I'm starting to realize that it's because we just don't have the carcass balance. Someone told me yesterday that we produce about 11 million pigs a year but we eat the pork loins of 25 million pigs a year. Where are we gonna find all them extra pork loins? We're gonna to have to buy them in. But we have other parts of like knuckles, feet, that kind of thing that we have to get rid of because we don't eat that over here. Now, before I came here, I had a, put a thing out on Instagram and I got a couple of questions um, from people who wanted to know different things about the meat industry. I had one question, someone was asking me why there is no rules or laws against cheaper imports coming into this country and undercutting us. Now we were supposed to talk to the minister yesterday who's like in charge of a lot of signing export deals, import deals. Unfortunately, whilst we were waiting for him, something happened and he had to get whisked off. So I never got the actual chance to ask him, but we were asking a few other people. What we found out was because we have a certain standard, there might not necessarily be laws against it, but there's no appetite for that product in the UK. So if we were talking to the US guys about hormone treated beef. They sometimes send beef to the UK, but it's very rare because the cost of production, it's just not economically viable for them to do it. But if they do, they don't send hormone-treated beef because it will not be allowed to come into the UK. So that stupid Jacob Rees-Mogg comment that he made the other day about hormones and Australian beef and all that rubbish, it's a load of crap. They can't send it here. They will not accept it because people will not eat it. And another really key point is what we've realized, we're not special in the UK by having a levy board and by having something like the red tractor as a food standard, that happens everywhere. It doesn't matter whether it's US, South America, Australia, it happens everywhere. We often tell ourselves that we're the best and I'm starting to realize we're not the best. We're just up there with the best. Another question I got was from someone asking about what's the best eating meat. Now, this was really interesting because I started asking people, you know, about different cuts, about different grades. And what we found out was they don't care about your grades. What they want is consistency. They say like, if you just aim for an R3, R4L, you're gonna have a consistent product every single day that someone can buy and ship to wherever across the world. And they know that they're gonna get that same thing. Every container they open is gonna be exactly the same. And actually it's hard to realize like that the Europe grid doesn't make any sense because they don't care. And no one would really answer and say, oh, this is better than that, or that's better than that, because it doesn't matter to them. It's just been a real eye-opener. I wish you could all come. I really do. And that's probably why this video is out here, so that you can kind of see it. 
it probably will never come across as well on this video as what it does actually being there. Anyway, I've got to get off because I've got a flight to catch. Whatever you get up to this weekend, have yourselves a great one. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in a bit. Ta-da!